There it is. Hello. There, everyone. Welcome. Hello, hello, friends. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us. We got a Theodore. We do. I don't know if you can catch that little weasel. He's let's, let's he's try around here. Him. Our our cat has turned three years old yesterday, team. And if you've never celebrated Hellblade with a cat, uh, did you hear it? Up, oh, summoned to Chizza. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you tuning in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And pardon my appearance. Welcome back for 13 months while Amelia summons Theodore. I can GoPro you. Oh yeah. Oh uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Salute the loots. Um uh they go by Shay. Welcome back for 21 months. Happy day. Yes, this is live. <laughs> uh Maddie is your girl. What's going on? Welcome back for six months. Appreciate you hanging out with us. And what's going on? Ami Dala. Welcome back for 45 months in a row. Can I please, can I please get some love for our moderators? Thank you, mods. Thank you, lieutenants. Thank you, Theodore, for joining us. If you uh <laughs> um if, if you're not familiar, this little crab toy was a gift from uh UK Fangirl Jade, who uh has basically changed our world. Theodore loves this toy. But now Amelia and I, before we go to bed, every single night say, Where's the crab? <laughs> and uh we have to make sure it's on a shelf because that little bell and that little crinkle will wake you up at any time. What's up, Madge First? How you doing? Yes, it is a cat. You are correct. Alright, he's on the move. Mod love, <laughs> Lieutenant love. We appreciate you being here and pardon my appearance. Thank you for the gifted subs, the five gift subs, five gift subs. What can we do for that? We got it. We got it. Mm, too many ducks. Ducks are good. Thank you. Pardon my appearance for Thank the too many so ducks. Much. Can we be a hug as well? Yeah. With all these ducks. <laughs> what? Yes, I love you. I love you. Thank you. Uh, I, and Caitlin Hayes, thank you for being here with the gift sub to Reg wishes she had magic. You are all here for our Hellblade discussion. These are our Games Club streams. Amelia and I have started doing a book club-like Games Club. Yes. Where we discuss our favorite games together. But but why, Amelia? Why would we do that? Why are we talking about our favorite games? Yeah, because why? Because Brian and I are developing our own video game. And we want your help to make it as awesome as possible. So we're talking about the games that we've loved streaming and experiencing with all of you to get into the details about why it's such a special game, what makes it stand out, what are the things that really just make it so good. And I loved Hellblade. So can I get a I've show I've heard Amelia say a couple of times that it's her favorite game we've streamed. I think it is. She said that. I, I heard her that. say it again yeah. and again. Good um, to see you. So let's get a show of hands. Who here has played Hellblade or who has seen Hellblade played or who doesn't know why Hell has a blade? Well, if you've not played Hellblade before, it is the story of Senua, who is a Celtic warrior who is going to basically save the soul of her deceased love who Dead, was yeah. killed by Vikings and he is in Helheim. Helheim. And uh, she has to go rescue his soul. It's intense. It is intense. Um, this will be a spoiler safe discussion. Uh, we're going to hang out and keep it real uh, general in the beginning, but it's going to get more and more spoiler specific, mm -hmm. uh, especially as we discuss towards the end of the game. So if you haven't played, I yeah. uh, want to just give you that heads up. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, not so much a no spoiler stream as a there's going to be spoilers. We're going to spoil. Yeah. We're gonna, because we've all played it uh, well, together. We, have, so. we played it and uh, <laughs> we think a lot of you have too. Yeah. Um, thanks for being here. Amelia has a lovely voice, Lee. Thank I like you. I like your style. Uh, the Lee. Emperor Gremlin, welcome and thank you for cheering Midnight in Estonia. Hello. Ooh, hello. Thank you. Thank you for joining us from Estonia. Uh, are. We're getting birthday wishes from Estonia. How yeah, do you feel? What do you think of that, Deduiz? He's convinced there might be a bird outside or even a squirrel. Maybe hey, Thurstos, it's... thank you for the five gifted subs, Thurstos. Hey, Thurstos. Thurstos. If you're thirsty, we should go underwater. But if you're underwater, you might find something unusual. What could you find? A fish. Save it. There it is. I gotta make it so it doesn't spawn right over your face. I don't time. mind. You don't mind? No, I, I like goldfish. Yes, a, a bird riding a squirrel or a squirrel riding a bird. Theodore is honestly just pretty much down for anything that moves. Mm -hmm. um, big fan of moving objects. Yeah. Aquafire, thank you for the raid by the by by the way, by the hey, by, at the so start much. of the stream. Appreciate that very much. <laughs> um, before we jump into our discussion of Hellblade and what makes it such an awesome game, yeah. uh, I want to invite all of you, uh, if you haven't, uh, you can retweet to invite your friends. We put up a little tweet to uh, kick the stream off each time. And 
we have to announce what we're going to be playing when we come back because tomorrow yeah, we're and take, Sunday, we're, we're AFK. Taking, we're taking the weekend off. Why? Because our friend Lo the Music Man is getting married. Lo the Music Man is getting married, team. Will you help me wish him a happy wedding weekend? I'm going to... I'm gonna pop up a tweet right now of the three of us dancing together on one of our concert streams. Lo makes all the awesome music at the beginning of our streams and our hydration break music. We've done concert streams with him and listening parties before. Um, and uh, basically he's our good buddy and we're gonna be in the wedding. And so tomorrow we will not be streaming because we'll be at a wedding. And the day after we will not be streaming because we had just been to a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we should announce, yeah, congrats, Lo. Yeah, and if you'd like to retweet it, it's the pinned tweet or it's the top tweet up on my uh, Twitter right now with a picture, a uh, gif of us all dancing. Yeah. Um, yeah, our friends got to get married. So we'll get to celebrate. And we get to see some other friends from out of town, which is Hop really up. cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, but we do have games for when we return. Yes, so Tuesday, we're going to start playing Stardew Valley, mm. which has been a highly recommended game. I'm excited to weed the garden and <laughs> build a little house. We've been, we've been warned by Never people played. that love Stardew Valley that it may take over our lives, in which yeah. case all the rest of our streams will be Stardew Valley. <laughs> we've never played Stardew Valley, so it'll be the first. And then on Saturday, we're going to check out this game called To the Moon. To the Moon. It looks very sweet and wholesome. I'm excited to check it out because on Sunday, we're going to start playing Bioshock. Yep. Which yep. looks... Yep. Not as wholesome. <laughs> uh, Bioshock looks awesome. My brother says it's his absolute favorite game of all time. So that's a huge recommendation. I know a lot of you love Bioshock as well. And Friday, we're going to go deviant. We're going to take you on a mystery stream somewhere outside. <laughs> we're going to go outside with you in the world. What do you think about that, team? If we went deviant. Yeah. If we did something we had not done on stream before. If we had... Field trip, yeah. Field trip. We're going into the world on Friday, team. But we don't know where. We'll we, figure it I, out. And, and it's not really that, like, we know and we're just not telling you. We just don't know we yet. We just don't know yet. Um, but we are going to try to do... We're not going to try. Do or do not. There is no try. I am going into the world. We're going to go in the world. We're going to take you with us. We're going to get a suntan, team. It'll be, it'll be 25 minutes of Amelia and I laying <laughs> pale in the sunlight, <laughs> <laughs> getting ready for some summer so we don't get a burn. Yeah, it'll be um, fun. I'm IRL, excited. the sun, it's out there. The sun is out there, team. I grew up in Michigan. We didn't believe in the sun for most of my childhood, uh, but it's there. <laughs> yes, you will all need permission slips uh, and <laughs> yeah. make sure that you pack a bag lunch. Oh my God. If I made a permission screen. slip, would you all would y'all get it signed? Turn, fax it in to us? <laughs> fax it to the front office? Maybe we can also like choose, like have, give them different options to vote on. Like we narrow of it down. where we go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do that. Maybe we'll do that over the week. Week. Keep an eye. Hey, I get five, a three. Thank you so much for those wow. huge cheers. Wow. I get thank you. Wow, I get three. Thank you for that. I, I, only, I mean, it, it's not immediately applicable, but I would like to give you a purple heart for that. <laughs> Catch it. There it goes. Oh, that, that, ah, it's gone forever. That was a real purple heart. A real, a real sapphire? Oh, no. Here's a ruby one, just in case. Here's a, oh. It's so pretty. I see Miss Courtney. Olivia is back for 46 months. Hey, welcome Wishing back. Theodore a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Theodore. When you're done staring at the wall, He's let us know. fixated, yeah. <laughs> let us know. Um, also, Alit117, thank you for the gifts up to Snowcake. Yo, Alit, thank you. Have a butterfly. <laughs> Enjoy it. It's very real as well. And Thurstos, thank you again for the <laughs> five, uh, five gifted subs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I also saw uh, <laughs> you're gonna bring the medic. Okay, you, we have someone's bringing a first aid kit for the for the field trip. Does anyone want to pack snacks? What would you bring on our field trip? Then, if you're yes. gonna, if you're gonna, ditto. I would bring ditto. Yeah. On our field trip. Mm -hmm. We love ditto. Ditto. Mm -hmm. I'm put ditto right here. Check snacks. What do you think of that? Um. Many snacks, sunscreen, vegan sushi, cheese, Ethereum, Come Nintendo on. Switch, on, Doritos and dip, apple slices, band-aids for blisters, good tip. Band-aids for blisters. Yeah, we're going to do some walking on our field trip team. All right. Let's 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 get down to business. To defeat the Huns? To talk about Games Club. Look at that. That was the oh, first man. time I've ever thrown anything in my life and it went close to where I wanted it to go. Hades the God is here and cheering. Thank you, Hades, for the big cheers. And uh, Metagon, welcome back for 20 months, saying happy birthday, Kitty Theo. Uh, Shay, thank you for the gifted sub to Rachel Annie and Connor 
uh, forever. What's going on? Happy birthday to Theo. Welcome back for seven months. And wonderful Suki, welcome back for two whole years in a row. Runaway, Runaway's giving out five gifted subs as well. I gotta Let's say thank you. Get. Bring Theo over. I gotta talk quieter. I get excited when we bring Theo up towards the camera and then he freaks out. Theodore, my boy. He's like, I want to stare out the window, obviously. Alit, thank you for the cheers for Theo. And Toshter, thank you. For <laughs> Happy birthday, Theo Deckard Blair. Little one. Go back there. Go onto the camera. You're going to like it, Theo. You've got a lot of friends who really just want to see you. You just grab him, maybe? Uh, Ika3, thank you again for the gigantic cheers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, where are you headed over there? And go, 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 Theo. Thank you, Theo. Hey, Sunflower Spidey, what's going on? Welcome back for two months. Appreciate you being here with us and charmed forever. Welcome back for eight months in a row saying happy birthday, Theo. Uh, AEB1999 is back for 28 months. I think I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna whisper 28 instead of scream every time when Theo's here. And Charlie the Astronaut with some huge cheers as well saying, I've said this before, but Hellblade is a very special game to me and I'm very happy you guys got to play it. So much to discuss. It's true, we are gonna have a full stream today with theodore and hellblade discussion jay cherry's back for 18 months and malfoy welcome back for a whole year thank you thank you hades the goddess cheering los ninos back for 43 months amidala with the gifts up to field trip bus all right team get on the bus it's time to discuss hellblade and aseptic pma keep it positive my friend welcome back for 10 months oh the weekly fangirl back for 33 months in a row holy cow <laughs> And he's gone. And he's gone. There he goes. All right. Into the wild. Hellblade discussion, Amelia. Let's do it with Hellblade. a poll. I Let's got... go category by category. Uh, what do do? Well, yes. I think let's go category by category. I'm going to open up my journal, which is actually pretty close to the very end. <gasps> That's always exciting when you finish up a journal. Amelia's a heavy journal journaler. Mm. Get the pen, right? Yeah. Should we start off with like a, a, a broad, what is your favorite aspect of Hellblade? Yes. Okay, let's start with that. Um, when it comes to the game, feel free to shout it out in the chat. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, our bot will delete longer messages. So if you can uh, truncate what you're saying or put it into two different messages, it'll help get, uh, get by the bot. Um, you can let us know what is your favorite aspect of Hellblade. And then yeah, the, just shout it out. We're going to pull them from there and then uh, break it into pieces. The sound ne design. Nekoma, hello, thank you for joining us for the first time. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Anybody else here for the very first time? Shout yourself out. Sound design. That's sound I design see for sure. Psychosis, how is psychosis is translated into gameplay. Mm -mm. Yeah. Psychosis translated. I think that was one of the things that really stuck out the most in the discussion we had as we were playing and after we played the game. And we also got to watch the behind the scenes featurette, which if you have played the game and not seen, it's really worth checking out uh, the making oh, of... Metaphors of the puzzles. Yes. Metaphors of puzzles. Okay, sound design. Combat. Combat. Yes, very interesting combat. Can I throw out the uh, unique visual style? Because mm. we have a full motion video. Yes, um, the world of. Okay. Um, the facial expression, so the, the character design. All right, um, I'm gonna, uh, oh, collecting runes. The runes. Feel free to keep shouting them out. I'm gonna leave the poll at these top eight just so they all fit on the screen at the same time. As you can see, we're kind of running out of space here. Um, Go ahead and type in the chat if what if mm. oh the lighting was great mm -hmm. if there's if there's one of these uh categories that sticks out to you that you'd like to represent uh go ahead and type in number one for the sound design two for psychosis translated into gameplay mm. number three the metaphors of the puzzles number four for combat number five for the full motion video incorporated into the visual style uh the world of the story character design and collecting runes Mm. or runes i suppose runes. runes runes a super shag welcome back for eight months appreciate you <laughs> and uh queen myers thanks for the sub appreciate you being here uh you can you can vote by just typing any of these numbers into the chat and you can do it one time 
Uh, so whatever your favorite aspect of Hellblade is, you can either type one for the sound design, two for how the psychosis was translated into the gameplay, metaphors of the puzzles, the combat, the full motion video, the world of the story, the character design, or the runes. Well, I mean, this seems very clear. That this the... is saying a lot. Uh -huh. This is saying a lot. Um, A G versus Tino. But thanks, thanks for being here. I appreciate you cheering. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, it's your birthday too. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, thanks for tuning in, A G V. Glad to have you here. And Amber rocks. Thanks for rocking it with us for ten months. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. All right. Um, anybody else wants to vote? Now's a good time to do so. But I think I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this poll after a few more seconds. Now's your last chance to drop in a little vote on it. Thanks, Morning Gull. I see you. Thank you, Steffi. All right. And there we have it. There it is. 69%. That is a large majority of you, uh, especially when we have eight different options. That the psychosis translated into gameplay is your number one favorite aspect of Hellblade. Yeah. Very interesting. They also spent a great deal of time working with experts and people that are experiencing these sorts of video and, or visual and audio hallucinations yeah. um, and then mimicking them in the way they portray the story in the, the levels of the game. Yeah. I think for me, the, the, the thing that, that stood out the most in terms of translating the psychosis into the gameplay was the use of the different voices that Senua was hearing in her head throughout the entire game. So really those top two live together. Yes, because they they um some of them were helping you and then others are hindering you and it was you had to distinguish whether they were telling you the truth or they were lying to you, which I thought was a very beautiful metaphor for how we speak to ourselves. Um because I know for myself that inner critic that that voice that's telling me i can't and i shouldn't and i like don't deserve it is very very loud and so i have to make an effort a lot of the times to uh shift shift how i'm speaking to myself so that right, i make can make a deliberate yeah. deliberate effort to mm -hmm, do that mm -hmm. um so let's let's get a little bit more like in depth what were some of the other ways Besides, was was the voices the main one for you, or was it how she was... You got your top ones written down, I can close this up? Yeah. Well, when it comes to the psychosis translated into gameplay, can I ask a question on that category yeah, yeah. before we move into sound design and stuff? Um, so... How do I put this? Without, I don't want to spoil Gris either, but Gris is a great game that, to me, has some similarities here in mm -hmm. what we're taking, something that's like a bigger picture real world thing like uh in gris we're dealing with grief mm -hmm. um and we are as the player enjoying like another layer of the story gris was absolutely one of our favorites too it definitely yeah. stuck up at the top very 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 good but the thing that made it especially enjoyable to me was to take this like real world concept of like the stages of gris <laughs> grief played through the levels of Gris mm -hmm. or these different uh, types of video, uh, visual or audio hallucinations that are coming to people that experience them and then translating that into the game. And also this kind of like layer of all of the mythology, uh, which is, is coding the game. Yeah. So my question for you is, did you know uh, the themes of, hellblade before playing you know ah. like did you um or like, did you discover it as you were playing it and, yeah, yeah yeah and and uh i guess to second that question did you want to play the game because you knew of the subject matter or was it just an intriguing story and visuals yeah you discovered it as you're as you're playing yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop a whole poll up there. I understand it might be a smaller subsection of people who have done this, but you had watched the Dev Diaries beforehand. See, because for us it was that way too. We we were um, primed. We got some good input. By the way, if anybody wants to recommend a game, you can do with this panel below the video. There's also a spot on there where you can say why. And so a lot of people told us in their recommendation that the game dealt with psychosis and these different experiences yeah. mm -hmm. that people would have with hallucin uh, hallucinations. And um, and so to me, that was a really cool aspect of playing the game and it made it feel more real because I was like, all right, well, this is 
representing an experience that I don't actually live in, but I get to experience that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, you just knew about the binaural the binaural audio, which is uh, surround sound audio. We did play that game with headphones, and I really recommend if you haven't played it, you're going to play it again, play it with headphones. headphones yeah. Um, made a really, really immersive uh, mm-hmm. experience. Especially because a lot of the pu- some of the puzzles rely heavily on sound. So you have to listen for different voices that are pulling you in slightly different directions, which I thought was so cool. Yeah, so cool. Okay, so thirty a third of us played because of that. Mm-hmm. So that was like what introduced us to the story. That's us, the first cat. Right? Mm-hmm. And then half or more than half of us learned as we played it. Mm-hmm. And then some people completed the game and then watched some behind the scenes stuff and, and, and learn more in depth. Okay, cool. That's really interesting to me because I'm aware that as Amelia and I are building our game, there's some ideas that we have that we think are really, really important to like the core of the story. Mm-hmm. But I'm also feeling like if we were to be like, play this game, it's this is the core of the story. People might be like, eh, I want to be tricked a little bit. Or discover you know, it yourself. Like discover it yourself, like a little, like a the magic trick. Uh, that's that's my that's where I'm at uh, right now with, um, you know, yeah, what to do um, with the big picture ideas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Dorcarella, thank you for being here for seven months. That's such Dorcarella, a cute, I love such that. a cute name, Dorcarella. <laughs> you win, cutest name of the stream. Definitely better to discover it for yourself. Yeah. You think so? I mean, I, what do you think? Would you rather would you rather know like what the oh, Let's do that. Like okay. when it comes to any game, right? Mm-hmm. Here, let's do another poll. Mm-hmm. Um when it comes to a new game I am playing, uh-huh. I want to know as much as possible before or I want to know as little as much <laughs> as little as possible before. I don't know, man. I'm here for the snacks. Okay. Um, type a one in the chat if you want to know as much about a game as you can. Because some people really do. They want to get into the lore even before the game came out. I remember yeah. talking with our buddy Earl um, when we did uh, Lost Ark. Mm-hmm. And Earl was like an expert on this game the day it released because he read like so much information about it. And then there's other people that want to, like once I've decided I'm going to play a game, I'll mute all those words. I don't want to see that pop up on my feed. I don't want to read any reviews about it. Um, and you know, type a three in the chat if you're just hey, here for the snacks. Hey, Stephanie, thank you so much for the raid. Hey, what's going hey, on, Stephanie? Come on in, friends. Come on in, Stephanie. Thank you, we're, thank you. We're talking about Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice for our Deck Art Games Club stream, which is kind of like a uh, book club, but for games. So today is all about Hellblade. <laughs> Hellblade, indeed. And yeah. uh, Polisina, thank you for the gift. It's up to Cloudy. Appreciate you. Uh, and hey, Weez, how you doing, Theo? I think that um, I saw somebody ask about, is it a scary game? It definitely has some spooky elements. Like the world is yeah, pretty dark. Yeah, it's got heavy, heavy subject matter. The, for sure. the main, you as the main character, Senua, are traveling into the realms of Helheim. So you're going to see some dark and death. And you're yeah. gonna have to battle it. Yeah. Some dark and death and some battle. Yeah. This is really good feedback I'm getting from you all. Y'all, y'all have variations on the same thing. Seventy-two uh, percent of us uh, who answered the poll are more in the no little as possible category. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that maybe then what this is telling us is that people don't want to be told anything, but they want it. Like if a friend plays it and then they loved it and they're like, "Oh, this is you totally about it. this," and they, you know, to make it be part of the hook or part of the you know, the reason why you recommend that game to that person, for yeah. instance. Or also, like, as you're playing it, you start to learn what it's about, what the main, what the themes are and stuff, and it, it reveals itself to you as opposed to ahead of time being like, this is what this game is about. Right. Yeah. Especially when it comes to heavier subject matter, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, so I think what were the, the different ways that, um, that they incorporated – Psych- how they translated the psychosis into the gameplay. I think one of the biggest ones was the voices. That stuck out to me. Um, what what were some of the other uh, mechanic game mechanics that they used, um, in your opinion, to translate what that psychosis, the visual hallucinations? Okay, very good. I'm gonna put these all up and we'll see which ones worked best for each, you know, uh, for the whole category. Yeah, how she would start seeing things and then it would just disappear. Um, 
beautiful, visuals. Beautiful. The delusions. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go with... Uh, Vibrant and dark colors. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Oh, the death system. Yes, because every single time you would die, there would be a darkness that would start to crawl up your arm. And then if it got all the way to the top, you'd have to start again from the very beginning. Permadeath! Mm -hmm. Perma yep. Death, the yep. rot. Yep. Yep. Oh, yes. Mm, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, You're right, but... but the question is, even if it's a bluff, it still impacts your experience while you're playing the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it gives you, I mean, to me, I'm going to say, okay, I want to save it for the, a little bit later to talk about the end. I don't want to talk about the end yet, but I want to talk about the end. The ending of this game is what makes me so like, I don't know confident in it. Like I really like if, if somebody was like proved to me that video games are art, Give me a list of video games to play. I definitely think I'd put Gris and I'd put Hellblade on there for mm -hmm. kind of the same reason. You know? Yeah. It feels like totally, totally, it, it, Hellblade doesn't come out of like, I want to tell a scary story or I want to like, you know, like shock value or I want it to just be like entertainment, like escapism. Like it's very clearly rooted in something that's like big mm -hmm. picture, real world stuff. To me, that's really valuable. Um. Yeah, you you feel that pressure that she felt. It was the permadeath was an amazing way to give the player a taste of Senua's anxiety, so that you are really feeling like you're in her shoes. Yeah. What were some of the other the other like game mechanics that we really liked? I mean, I mean the combat system was very like there was no HUD. Yeah, yeah. There, so there's... you didn't know how close you were to defeating each of the monsters that came up to you. And um, also you had to figure out h how to use the, like what the different buttons meant. There was nothing that came up to show you what it meant. You just had to experiment and press different yeah, things. Yeah, no tutorials. It's just mm -hmm. like, here you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which I think was really cool. The, the fighting was simplistic, but I liked that because I knew I started to learn the... Um, the moves that the demons would make. And I'm like, okay, I gotta jump out of the way. And then I gotta mm -hmm. jump back in and jump out of the way and jump back in. You know, you had to, you had to learn their moves. Mm -hmm. And I think that also if the combat system was more complicated, that like we're changing stances or weapons or something that would start pulling me away from the story, mm -hmm. like the heart of the story, the core of the yeah, story. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, Yes, it did definitely feel like every battle could be Senua's last. Mm -hmm, that's true. I mean, I felt from the very beginning of that game, I was barely making it through, mm -hmm. which is a really, really beautiful kind of tone. You have to be in a specific kind of mood to get into, right? Yeah. Uh, Los Nino, thank you very much for the big cheers. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so, Miko, we, we already played the game. Uh, if you want to check out our playthrough, it's on YouTube. Yep. Um, today, we're just talking about the game because... Uh, Brian and I are developing a video game, and so we want to chat about our favorite games that we've played with all of you on stream, because they're influencing our game. Uh, which brings me to uh, probably one of my favorite aspects. Um, oh, Can okay, I pull this yeah, real quick? do that. Okay. Uh, so psychosis into gameplay mechanics. Which ones were your favorites? Yeah, like what worked best for you? What What of these is most satisfying? Was it? the visual the visual hallucinations was it the voices in our head the audio design was it the death system uh, the uh, rot the that rot. would slowly creep up was it the perspective puzzles like the arches that you'd have to look through and change yeah, your, you gotta stand just here to see the doorway or, whatever. or was it the combat system how there was no hud no hp bars no tutorials you just had to find out by by doing I thought, I mean... <laughs> you want to vote for all of them? That's fine. You can vote for all of them. I'll, I'll write, write it down. Black Cat plays votes for all of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the voices and the audio design is, is really what sets this game apart. I mean, Amelia and I stream almost every single one of our games that we stream without 
headphones. Um, we play the music or the gameplay uh, playback uh, a little quieter than we have it set up in the output of our OBS system so that we don't have to wear headphones because we've discovered that when we're wearing headphones, it makes it, we're kind of isolated from each other. And if you're streaming on your own, that's okay. But if you're like, huh, what, huh, one second. And uh, to avoid that, we have not really played a lot of games with headphones. But this one was one of the games that was just like, you have to play it with headphones. And I am so glad. Mm. Really made a big difference. Really big difference. Yeah. All right. If anybody else wants to drop a, a vote on the poll, but that looks like pretty clear. It looks like the visual perspective puzzles come in second. And the visual, visual hallucin is it hallucin neighborhood dragon hallucinations neighborhood dragon welcome back for a year and a half my friend welcome you got, back got yourself a new badge there and speaking of badges the outlaw viking outlaw here. viking how you doing outlaw viking destiny is all <laughs> basically i want to be utric son of utrid and yeah. so do you <laughs> paula <laughs> cena thank you for the gifts up to yuki mooks Deep. And Black Cat, how you how you doing? Oh, I'm I'm glad Hellblade is one of your favorite games. You love it so much, you platinumed it. Platinumed it. Fire Crystal, thanks for the cheers as well. Yes, Destiny is all. <laughs> uh, the Last Kingdom team, Amelia and I, we love Last Kingdom. We do, we do. Um, all right, voices in the head, audio design. I'm gonna clear this away. Mm-hmm. And you were gonna say something that you were like, okay, now the part I really want to say. Yes, which is the the different puzzles, because I. I we've played so many different games, but I thought that the the way that they designed the puzzles in Hellblade was so uh, sophisticated and smart and different. Um, I really really enjoyed the perspective puzzles where um, you had to change where you were standing. You had to physically Let's see if I can change. Grab an image of it, we you can... had to physically change your point of view in order to see something clearly. And then if you changed it again, it might disappear. So it was all about changing your point of view and being able to see things from a different angle, which is a very cool way to, to make a puzzle, but also a very wonderful lesson in life about you know having to change our perspective to see something clearly because you're if you're always looking at something head on you're going to miss a lot of different things so it's essential to be able to change your points of view um and i think one of the most effective in my point of view was this these arches so the cool thing about these arches is that you had to move through them and then after you've passed through an arch you were able to see something like either a uh, a walkway or a staircase or a door something would appear once you moved through this archway um which would allow you to traverse so yeah. basically you'd find yourself in a situation where you can't get to the other side of the fort or the forest or whatever it is mm-hmm. um and then you're Basically, by changing your perspective, there's one with these masks, the yeah. Janus masks, which are really interesting, too. Sound, the sound puzzle, that was a good one, too. Yeah, there was one uh, a bit like a portal, but you're, you're, you're still going to the same environment on the other side, but one thing has changed. It's most like, in my opinion, uh, in The Matrix, where they have deja vu. It's like, I just saw that cat. Mm-hmm. And they changed something in The Matrix. It's like that. It's like, now there's brick walls instead of windows. Now there's ladders instead of walls. Now there's a staircase. Now there's a, an opening in the in the fort or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so what were some of your favorite puzzles in Hellblade? Um, so there was the arches. There was the sound puzzle where you had to follow Dylan's voice and his bright light throughout mm-hmm. the space. How about matching the runes uh, in the environment? The runes was really, really cool. Uh, where again you had to change your point of view in order for a rune to appear in the environment. Yeah, uh, let me grab the an mask image of that one, one too. I don't remember the mask one. The mask one was one where we uh, it was the Janus mask. So I'll pull it up. Um, so here's an example of the uh, this sort of D shaped rune that you can see here. Mm. And so this would start to hover over on the screen. You'd start to see little ones of these. Um, telling you when you were getting near, but then you'd find in the environment, uh, uh, basically, um, these, these image, these runes that were shapes like, uh, well, they, they look, I guess, kind of like letters, but they're not, they're runes. Um, and that would help you open up different doors. So you would clear different stages by finding these things in the environment. 
And uh, here's another example. Oh, oh yes. And then when you had to move through the villages really fast, like your, um, it was as if she was transported back in time and through a burning building, and she had to navigate oh, the burning building. Oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, so it's navigating through past, navigating through uh, environments um, in past. Yeah, one thing also when it comes to the puzzles, but this is really more of a storytelling thing. I really liked when we came to those, um, those. Oh, there it is. There, I heard evil cackling about going into the fire. And I, was I was like, like what? what is that? It was a background video playing uh, when I had Googled Hellblade. Um, you get the VR version of this game. Oh my goodness. Oh, well, that's, that's intense. Who else has played this game? <laughs> In VR. Mm. I don't know if I can handle that, honestly. Black Hat, yeah. Using the light was a great way to puzzle. Um, so if you stay in the dark for too long, you'd get, be consumed by darkness. Oh, yes! Yes, because you had your your light. Yeah. And it was only it would only last for a little bit. Light puzzles. Yeah, and we literally... Some puzzles were like almost in complete darkness. Yeah. Navigating through darkness. We, we had to listen. We had to just listen to go. Yeah. Which I think is also a really beautiful metaphor of like listening to your instincts. Um, yeah. No, the game we're making, uh, Thanos, is not in VR. No. Uh, I mean, it's, yet. No. Uh, unless one of you figures out how to put it in VR and goes, look what we did. Um, but no, our, our intention is to, to, to not. Mm -mm. Um, we're making a, we can tell you that it is a branching narrative mystery game. Yes. And what we're doing is we're looking for all the pieces. And basically, Amelia and I have this this list of our favorite games. I saw someone ask, do we ever do a top 10 list? Um, we have done our favorite games. I don't know if we've actually boiled it to top 10, but it's on our Discord. If you want to look, we have a full list of all the games we've ever streamed. And we did, during one of our anniversary streams, put up a, mm -hmm. a top list. I'll double check on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess another question that I have is about the... Um the story itself is a very it's a very heavy story um it deals with a very you know intense subject matter um what is your threshold when it comes to um intensity of the storyline like how be, because you know we only have so much time to play games in our off time it's like you have to choose to go into that world right. um what is your threshold in terms of how do we measure that yeah like how intense is too intense and <sighs> um how much do you like to be pushed kind of against your to the limit of your comfort zone versus staying where in a place that's more comfortable um because i know that like you know we, we only have a certain amount of time to to go and play games um and how do you choose, like, do I want to chill out with, like, Stardew Valley, or do I want to go into something like Hellblade, where I know it's going to be an intense experience, but it's also going to be very satisfying in the end? Um, you like to be disturbed, and you like to think. Huh. You wouldn't know the answer to that, so it depends. Yeah. I'm going to do it like this. This is, I think when you mentioned trying to explain it, like comfort zone is a good way to start because some people just, the way you approach games definitely is different. I mean, sometimes I'm like ready to battle and other times I just want to float around, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I get that it's different. But when it comes to your favorite kinds of games, are your favorite kinds of games, number one, in your comfort zone, you know, like a nice comfy, cozy kind of a game, you know, maybe like your, uh, Animal Crossing, your Sims 4, you know, like I'm going to call that like really kind of like safe and cozy. Uh -huh. Number two, near your comfort zone, but something new, you know, mm -hmm. something that could have higher stakes, but it's not like, uh, you know, maybe saving the whole world or life and death circumstances or something. Number three, let me escape into a new reality. This is kind of my favorite category mm -hmm. too, is I, I like a game that's like, and now the whole world is, you know, mm -hmm. 1300 Tsushima. Now the whole world is uh, post-apocalyptic, uh, you know, The Last of Us. Yeah. And number four, I guess this is also The Last of Us, <laughs> give me the most intense story you've got. Like, if you just want, you know, drama. Yeah. Stakes. Fear. 
<laughs> um, a lot of the games that get recommended for us are really scary. <laughs> um, and some of them are like thematically very dark. Yeah. So we're just kind of interested in where everybody falls on where, this where you're, spectrum. Where it's looking like is. a number three on there. Um, yeah. For this, for this group. For this, this is group. obviously a, this is a sampling bias that I'm not going to get into. But basically, if you ask a group of people who are already in a room about a thing, they're already a subsection of people. But here we are. Yeah. Um, Meeb. Thank you, do, thank you for being here, and Cat thanks me, for, for subscribing and to Brev our channel. And Brevlada, welcome back for six months. And Velvet Decay's back for a whole year. Yes, the quarry is coming. We saw that. Yes. Um, we saw that one. And I'm if you excited. have a game that's it's not yet released, but you want us to play it, or you'd like us to stream it, drop it on this form, exclamation point games in the chat. That's going to get us uh, a, a comprehensive overview of what everybody's really into. The quarry, when I posted up on Twitter, I said, what are you guys most hyped for? Corey's coming out, I think, what is it, June? Yeah. Um, okay, I have another question. Um, so. June 10. If you had the option in a game, if it was presenting you with a bunch of different types of stories, and you had the option to either just opt out of a story, if you're like, nah, I don't like this character, I don't like what they're representing, mm. I just don't want to, do you, would you like to have the option to just not go on a certain storyline and just choose to do another one? Or do you want something that's going to make you go into each of the different levels and you can't skip out on certain levels? Mm. Like there would be consequences, but you could have the option of just, like if there was seven different, uh, let's say trials or different levels that each had a different theme, would you like the option of just like skipping out on a certain theme if you were not interested in it? Or would you want to be, you'd have to move through all seven? I'm not really sure if this poll is exactly reflecting what you're getting at, but when it comes to a game, if there's a main story quest, main story, it's like a locked main base you've got to have. Or if it's customized based off, and a lot of games are called loyalty quests. Uh -huh. Like when we played Mass Effect, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, your story can kind of bend or expand depending on what's going on with these other characters. It also gives you a different point of view about the world at large and the story as it is. Yeah, like if you had the option to just skip Zlatko, if you're just like, no. I would skip Zlatko. You're just like, no, I'm just going to turn around and leave. And I know that that means that I'm not going to get to meet Luther, but that's the choice I'm making. Um, as opposed to having to go meet Luther. I mean, having to go to, to Zlatko to meet Luther. You love, you love Zlatko's chapter screen? Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ban screen real quick. <laughs> nope. No, 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 no. Bye. Ban. <laughs> what is it? Super, super store? Super store, yeah. How do you, how do you even say that? Um, <laughs> Zlatko is just, to me. We know. Too creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like Zlatko. I've never liked him since I saw concept art <laughs> in the very beginning. Re3, thanks for the cheers, yo. Uh, Grognarok, thank you for being here for five months. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, well, that's a lot of love for the side questing vibes. Yeah. I mean, 73% is huge. But to, to have the option, but, like, you know, you, you, don't, you don't have to necessarily do it, but, like, strongly encouraged to. How would you put, the, like... Okay, God of War. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the most recent one. And Hellblade. Mm-hmm. Both are in this world of mythology. Obviously, there's other games that are a mythological world. But the world is much bigger, right? Mm -hmm. Than an open world, uh, than, than the game allows you for. Like, uh, for instance, um, well, all the worlds are bigger than the, what they... they Hellblade is not an open world game. No. But I never felt like I was really on, like that I felt too, like, trapped? Like, the world on seemed a train. to... Yeah, I, like, like maybe it's because it didn't tell me what to do or I didn't have, like, waypoints or checkpoints or quests to tag and to... But I just felt like, because I was always just kind of going into the world of the story, I felt like I was always constantly discovering it, but it didn't have, like... Well, I think not I having the HUD kind of uh, sets you, like, allows you to be um, uh, enveloped in the story a little bit more because it, you, you kind of forget sometimes that you're playing a 
game because it doesn't have the some of the game things that might take you out of the story a little bit, like seeing someone's HP or seeing where you're supposed to be going, you know, like your little yeah. waypoint. Sometimes, sometimes I think that takes you out. Like, for example, we just finished playing Horizon Forbidden West. And um, that was a huge, huge story with a lot of lore and very high stakes. But because of the way that the game itself was structured, it kind of took some of the um, immediacy out of the story versus Hellblade. The immediacy of the story was like you were in it the whole time. You didn't have time to be like, hold on. I'm just going to go loot all these things while you wait for me to go and, like, save your son Yeah, yeah. I'll save the world in a second, but I got to go do this thing for Blood Dog. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, uh, N- Nanastia says that they'd much rather have a compelling quarter than a boring open world. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I, I, Black Cat asked, am I asking uh, linear versus uh, open world? What I guess I'm getting at, this game is not necessarily linear because we're flashing back and forward through time. Mm-hmm. I guess what I'm getting at is that I liked that Hellblade was like a cinematic experience in that the story was corridor from beginning to end. Like we as the viewer, it was not a branching narrative. Mm -hmm. Like these things were all going to happen. They didn't happen all in the same uh, like sequence. Mm -hmm. You know, they weren't all, all in sequence, but you were compiling this information. So I felt like I was like moving through a bigger believable story world and I never felt trapped by what I feel in a lot of other games, which is that I like want to open a door and it's just not a door. It's a texture wall. Mm-hmm. I want to go off the map, but I can't. And now it says return to the playable area. Yeah. Like to me, I'm, I'm really interested in games uh, where there's this sense of I could go anywhere I want, but that if I go anywhere or wherever I go, it still has like story value, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. And so this game to me did a good job of blending my... I, I never had my impatience for, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in this level or this zone or this area, you know, in the same way. It all felt like the world was much bigger past the, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if that makes a ton of sense. Kind That's of. how I feel. Um, hey, LLB, what's going on? Thank you for the gift sub to Roros. 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 Hey, Uh-oh. Nick. It's Nick. Nick. GG Nick D. Everybody say, hey, Nick. Hey, Nick. Uh, GG Nick D is our lovely manager who from time to time will drop themselves into our chat for a delicious pun. <laughs> hey, uh, Nick. How you doing? Um, We're oh. talking about Hellblade. Have you played Hellblade, Nick? z that's very interesting. Thank you for your concise mm. description. So uh, Nick says, what do you call birds that stick together? Birds of a feather? Velcros. <laughs> That's a good one. Velcros. My mother would like that. We're going to run that by mom. Oh, sea glues is also pretty good, too. Ooh, sea glues? <laughs> Velcros and sea glues? Team. Hold on. I just. You're going to text your mom? I don't want to try it. Uh, uh, Tara, yes, we did play Zelda Breath of the Wild that we've played. and Love Breath of the Wild. It, yeah. Can I get a sequel, please? Can it's I, coming, can I please get a sequel to that game so I can go away for 100 hours? Amidala, thanks for the gifts up to Banhammer. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Amidala. Oh, duct tape, that's another good one. Duct oh, tape. duct tape is good. Yeah. There's three answers to this question. I'll leave it as a voicemail. If she doesn't answer, team, I'll give my ma something to chuckle about later. Mom? Mom! No, we're gonna leave voicemail. Right, here we go. Let me guess her voice message box is full. <laughs> just a second, team. Just a second. Just gonna get myself on this voicemail. Sorry for just slowing up the whole everything. I'm gonna make her call me back for the answer. Okay. Hey, Ma, it's me. I'm streaming right now, and we got a real good pun for you. I know you like them. Uh, what do you call birds who stick together? Velcros. Or sea glues. Or duct tape. <laughs> I don't know. The third one's a stretch, but we like it anyway. We love you. Bye. <laughs> Look, thank you, Nick. 
Thank you. I told Nick, uh, I said, listen, man, I don't like your jokes all the time, but my mother likes them every time. So, uh, <laughs> GG, Nick D. GG. GG. All right, Amelia, you had another question you wanted to, to drop on him. Yes. Okay. So we talked about your favorite part of Hellblade was how the psychosis was translated into the gameplay. And that was put, uh, your, what you thought was the most effective were the voices in your head, uh, the perspective puzzles, and the visual hallucinations. Mm -hmm. uh, your second favorite part about this game was the sound, which I think goes in with the psychosis translated into the gameplay and having to really rely on different senses. I'm going to write that down. Rely on different Senses. You would love to get that voicemail. Oh my gosh, should we do a thing? Should we celebrate the, the anniversary where people just uh, leave me their phone number and I'll just call you up and leave you a voicemail with a pun? We could do that. Is that an absolute waste of time or is that the best idea I've ever had? <laughs> um, <laughs> That's uh, how I feel about all of my ideas. I'm like, this is a really good idea or a horrible idea. All right, so the next thing was combat. <laughs> Yeah, um, the combat system. The combat system. Which I think we, we're, we're an hour into it, so at this point I've said a couple of times, if you don't want to have anything spoiled about the game, please step away or mute us or be spoiled. But here it goes. Um, the end of the game, when it comes to combat, mm -hmm. there was no HUD, there was no tutorial, you just did what you had to do and you figured it out slowly, you watched the animations of the people attacking you, you kind of had to figure it all out together or on your own. Mm -hmm. But for me... The best thing about Hellblade is the ending and the fact that if, and I said it a couple times, spoiler, 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 okay. If you keep fighting the final fight, the final fight continues. The only way to end the game is to stop fighting, to let go of the fight, to surrender. To me, that is huge. It's so huge. It goes against all of the conventions. Dylan's speech was great too, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but the, 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 all of the conventions of video games that we've come to... Uh, Learn. Yeah, and, and, and like be, be primed with. Mm -hmm. When it breaks away from that with a simple little thing, that was like revolutionary to my brain. And, and the fact that like we got ready for that because we were warned like... Make, the mods told us, they're like, make sure you have enough time. The last fight's a really long fight. It could go on for what seems like forever. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? But, like, I'm not kidding, team. I was, like, doing, like, hand warm-ups. Like, I was like, I'm going to play this final boss fight so I can just really get it. Like, I was ready to win. I was not going to lose that fight. And then, like, that's not life. Like, you can, you can literally fight a losing battle for your entire life. Mm -hmm. You know? And there's things that you just have to be okay with letting go of and also moving on from and realizing you don't have control over. Yeah. And to me, that was, that was such a beautiful story. That's to me, that's the biggest thing. So, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to building a game, I think that if a developer can put in something like that, that is so um, like true of the human condition um, and then you can experience it viscerally yourself mm. um, instead of just being told it. Cause it'd be totally different if, if one character is like, oh yeah you gotta just learn to let go kid and the other one's like it's hard to let go and they go yeah i know but just do it like me mm -hmm. and then you get told it it doesn't have nearly the same effect as as that final fight uh-huh i love it yeah i Ninja love it theory too. killed it with that move i cannot wait for the sequel you know there's another one coming team yeah play don't show play don't show vichelia bonus points for you thank you thank you thank you oh 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 i have so many little ideas my brain's kind of pinging all around mm -hmm um yeah after these games club streams we always get like you guys have no idea how helpful this is to us it is supremely helpful we will chew on what you say here we watch these streams back and read through all the chat because i know some of you have put in more thoughtful messages than we're able to read out loud or respond to each time but we do go back and read all of the chat alongside of mm -hmm. these um and you have some really really incredible insight and it's amazing i mean especially people who've played a lot of uh games um, yeah. No, we played it on X. Oh no! Wait, we played Hellblade on PlayStation, right? But we had to. We couldn't get it digitally. Yeah, we had to 
buy we it. We had to buy out. Yeah, we had to buy the physical disc. We played it on PlayStation, but it's no longer the PlayStation Store because the new one is exclusive to Xbox. That's what happened. Yeah. So you can go to like GameStop or something. It's on Steam. You can buy it. You buy it on PC too. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, Samus. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Could be. Um, Wolfie Geeka, thanks for being here and subscribing. Appreciate you. Oh, I did not know that. That's cool. The first sequel that Ninja Theory has ever made. That is really cool. Very cool. Mm. Um, well, I have before because Amelia and I we we do have wedding stuff that we're we're getting into pretty much tonight, tomorrow, and the next day we're going to be wedding moding it. Uh-huh. Um, but I do have a couple more things that I want to throw out because people ask about them mm-hmm. before we ramble on. But were there any more like questions we had ahead of time? I also want to do this. Remember the the the, the genie question one? Oh yeah, can I, can I, I think that? I think let's do the genie question for sure. Um, because I mean my biggest thing that you know that I I I want to pull in to our game are these perspective these different kinds of puzzles. Um, because I I just I love the messaging behind it of uh just changing your point of view and um being able to see something differently. Um, so yeah. yeah. Uh, it, we're already married. Uh, we're, we are in a friend's wedding that's happening this weekend. So Amelia, Amelia is a bridesmaid and I am a groomsman. Um, and it's our buddy Lo, Lo the Music Man, who we did, I think, did we, we, po- we posted a thing up on Twitter if you'd like to retweet it to wish him a happy wedding weekend. That's our buddy Lo. And uh, we also put up a SoundCloud with some music if you want to give yourself some, give yourself some jams. I'm hoping we get to hear some Lo jams at the wedding. I, I think know. that'll be good. I don't know where Theodore is. Might have gone under the couch. Sometimes he does that. In a dusty way. Your invite is still in the mail. Yes, Nick. Do you know, Lo? I don't know. Nick? Do you? Nick? Maybe. Weddings are nice, I agree. You could probably get here in time, Nick. Let's go. You met once? Okay, well then, of course you'd be... Oh, you're actually um, performing the ceremony, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> no. Actually, you know who is? We can tell this. Yeah. The Hoppa. Ben Levin. Our buddy Ben Levin, a.k.a. Hoppa, Grass Hoppa, is the minister for this wedding, which is going to be a ton of fun. Um, so, Amelia, I need you to help me, uh, well, vamp while I type in these, because there's a lot of different options. All okay? right. Let me see if I can try and get a little Theodore to show his little head. Buddy! Well, maybe we could talk a little bit about uh, our IRL stream that we're going to do next oh. Friday. Um, what kind of things would be exciting for for us to do? What kind of field trips would be a, uh, something that you'd be interested in um, going on us with? Because we want to we wanna get out of the studio. We want to take you on a real-life experience on the outside. What Beach party? Beach party? Fun Beach. hike? I'm going to let Amelia call these out because I'm typing up uh, a, a premeditated poll question we have for you. Griffith Park? Joshua Tree. Oh, it's a little far for us, but I like your idea. Let me write it down. I would go to Joshua, Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree. I would go actually too. It's cool um, before it gets too hot. Ooh, Should Japanese. Should we just go to Joshua Tree for a stream? <laughs> By, as a bike ride. Uh... Animal Sanctuary? Uh, bungee jumping? No. Not gonna bungee jump. I'm too scared of heights. Um, Disneyland? Go see Charlie at the zoo? Nick, who is Charlie? Miracle Mile? May- oh, maybe like an <sighs> L.A. tour? Nick, who is Charlie at the zoo, boy? Charlie is the sloth? Hollywood sign? I'm going to type in sloth Charlie and see what I get. Um, Sloth Charlie. Oh, God. (laughs) uh, There really is a... Laser tag? There is. Charlie the sloth. He eats rose petals. Really? Yeah. Team. Listen, I mean... I believe everything that Gigi Nickty says, like by default. But this I was skeptical of. Charlie the Sloth is there and waiting for us. I'm gonna go see. He eats roses. 
Phoebe. It's a hell of a way. Yeah, you want him, Nick? What do you think, Joey? Would like Charlie? <laughs> Um, if he is not here, thank you for being here and subscribing. I mean, not being here. I mean, well, in any case, uh, <laughs> thank you to the ethereal. Um, so we live in Los Angeles, California, if that gives you an idea of what some things that we can we can do here. Um, I like the beach idea. I like Griffith Park. I like Joshua Tree. Uh, Animal Sanctuary. Joshua Tree is really unusual, and mm -hmm. I have been kind of craving to go there. Yeah, we could totally go. And it would be a Friday. We'd have to start a little earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Parasailing? parasailing we'll have to work our way up to parasailing <laughs> uh but yeah a nature walk okay so if we did go to joshua tree do, do you want the drive like how long to, drive how, it's a long drive maybe out we could like start off in like the last as we get the, to like the Palm problem Springs. is like the cooler it gets to be somewhere oftentimes the further from good signal we are mm -hmm. so if we get into joshua tree and then go live it's very likely you see us like going like <laughs> and then it cuts out how much data you got? I mean, how much we could, data you got? We could definitely include most of the road trip. Like we could start in the car, um, and <laughs> yeah, two frames per second. And then you know, once we get to Joshua Tree, we can we can go into the park. Um, that could be cool. Yeah, that could be cool. All right, I'm gonna finish this up. What you've okay? You got. Um. What's my favorite place in LA? I mean, I personally love gardens. I like going to different gardens. There's quite a few botanical gardens around here. Um, so those are probably one of my favorite things to do. Um, I also like museums, but I don't know if we'd be allowed to stream in a museum. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I mean, different, different museums probably have different rules on it. Mm -hmm. Like there's... Um, uh, yeah. LA's nice. Um, okay, well, out of the, hi, Theodore, where did you come from? Where were you? Where were you, did we? <laughs> Theodore, ah, this baby. We, is there an aquarium? There's an aquarium, a, like, a couple hours away from us. I think we could go to an aquarium. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm excited. A cat cafe. I've never been to one of those. Cat cafe. I'm going to drop this poll on them and we can keep chatting about that. Okay. Cool. In the shark suits? Scree, do you know how immediately accessible the shark suits are? Do you know they haven't been laundered since the last time we wore them? Because how do you launder a shark suit? Anyway, um, here are seven answers uh, to a question. And I have seven more answers on the other side. Okay. Um, these are, well, actually, hold up. I'm just going to. These are a little bit more on the benevolent side. And then I have seven answers that are a little bit more on the selfish or personal side. A genie is in a lamp that you found at a garage sale or an antique store. And when you rub this lamp, the genie comes out, but he's a simple genie and he has no time for three witches. So he says you have one wish, make it count. These are a little more on the benevolent side of things. And then we'll make some more personal ones. But would you wish for, type a one in the chat, if you would wish to end poverty or make sure that everyone has access to money. Number two, would you free all captive animals? Would you, I'm sorry, number two. Number three, would you time travel to fix past mistakes? Number four, would you end war, bring peace? Would you, number five, stop global warming or end environmental destruction? And number six, end or put an end to mental illness or perhaps make mental illness more treatable or uh, at least better understood. Mm. Uh, I'm really interested in all of the feedback that we got. We put this question up on our Twitter. Uh -huh. We got hundreds of awesome replies. Amelia and I wrote them all down. <laughs> And we categorize them um, and put them into like different sections to try to like 
distill this question into one. I understand how some of them uh, overlap a little bit, um, and it's hard to to have one of them be clear of affecting the other ones. But uh, type a one through six into the chat real quick. I would love to get your input on this if you would wish for one of them. And Amidala, thank you for the gift sub to Charles the Sloth. Aw, thanks, thank, Amidala. Thank you for using Charles' full name. He does go by Charlie, but only in, in uh, the confines of Close Company. Ooh, these are some good ones. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, cool, okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you, mods. Appreciate you. Let's get a little mod love while we're at it. Mod love! Hello. Lieutenants, thank you. Sorry about the cat thing at the beginning of the stream. Hi. Oh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, yeah. Hell of a stream, team. Hell of a stream. All right. I'm going to pause this one. Uh, five more seconds to vote. Three, two, one. And the winner is to stop global warming or end environmental destruction. Uh, the second and third ones uh, are uh, tied or very close yeah. to it. Ending mental illness and putting an end to poverty or making so that everyone has access to money. Um, which I think... Honestly, uh, putting a putting a damper on some of those other elements might uh, deliver us to ending war. Mm -hmm. um, okay, cool. Uh, well, we can just grab that off. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to type up the other ones. The little bit more, uh, not selfish, but the little bit more self-centered answers. A little less benevolent for the world. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and while he does that, um, I'm going to ask which... Which is more exciting to you? Maybe just type in whatever one uh, you prefer. For our IRL in the real world next week, would you prefer to go with us on a tour of Los Angeles so we could drive all around and show you some famous sites and stuff? Would you prefer to go to Joshua Tree National Park? Uh, would you prefer to go to the beach, to the zoo, or to the gardens? We have some beautiful botanical gardens. Which one? Which one sound? <laughs> Tour of traffic. Yeah. Uh, that's part of LA. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, bumper bumper traffic which, stream. Which one? Which one sound good to you? Seeing a lot of love or tours. Gardens and the zoo, Joshua Tree, beach. Nice. Gardens. Gardens would be very nice. Beach. Anywhere. Anywhere with us, really? Aww. Anywhere? Aww. Mm. Cool. Thank you so much for uh for letting me know. I think what we'll probably do is put up a couple different polls on our various social medias throughout the week. A wild Theodore. Uh and um and uh decide where we're gonna go on Friday. Next Friday. Theodore. Look how soft and fluffy he looks. He looks really soft and fluffy. He looks so soft and fluffy. Let's see if we can get him to do his best. You wanna hear up buddy? Wow, look at those moves. What a fine weasel. What a good three-year-old boy. Oh, yeah. Get it with the chonks, please. Get it with the chonks. He's got some skills, plants. He's got some skills. This is his skill. This is his one skill. We don't do any other... Tr oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat it, eat it, Riz. <laughs> and fair lady, thank you for being here, saying happy birthday to Theodore. Welcome back for two months. Oh, the, oh, gotta get it, Weez. Gotta get it. He's very happy. Oh, Nissan, he already has. This is Theo's stream. This is Theo's world, and we're just living in it. Um, He is three years old yesterday. So we got Theo when he was six months old, because that was how old he needed to be to leave his uh, little family pod. Well, his really his mother. Theo is one of five kittens in his litter, and both of his... uh pairs of siblings were adopted before him so it was a leftover fifth wheel runt oh. hit at Reza. and we love him we genuinely love him all right amelia i've got our next poll up here if you want to should we return 
I'll come back to the cat in just a second. I'm going to drop up the, uh, the questions here. So this is a little bit more, um, if you were to use that genie's wish for something for yourself or a little bit more personally centered, a little less benevolent, I decided to break these into categories because some people just would never wish for something for themselves. They would only wish for someone else and uh, some people the other way around. So um, if you had to choose one of these things to uh, get in exchange for your wish from the from the minimalist genie. genie. Number one in the chat is unlimited money, a wallet that never empties. People put this in a great way. Like every time I spent $10, $10 would appear in my bank account or every time I, uh, you know, lost a, lost a quarter, I'd find a quarter kind of a thing. Number two in the chat, if you would want to feel confident in yourself always, mm. to just have a, a, a sense of uh, self-satisfaction, to feel good about the way you look and feel about your your uh you know your your whole world number three would you wish for immortality to not be able to be killed mm. or to die number four uh for your favorite foods for free anytime a lot of people put chocolate ice cream burritos you know just like a magical fridge every time you open it it's got your snacks of of favor number five if you would like to speak with someone who has passed away uh people also put um, to bring someone back from the dead, uh, or to uh, be able to communicate with the dead, or to, in this case, speak with one person, let's say, specifically. Number six, you could go on a vacation anytime you snap your fingers. Give yourself some leisure. Uh, this is an ultimate relaxation kind of one. And number seven, to find your soulmate or your true love. Mm. Yes, yes. A lot of these things could help. I mean, unlimited money would put you on vacation or help you get the snacks, but... Uh, you know, it's uh, yeah. thematically, we're looking in different categories here. Also, Vervian, thanks for being here 10 months. And Hades the God, how you doing? Thank you for hanging out. <laughs> Immortality sounds awful. It does, actually. <laughs> it yeah. does. Because yeah. you'd have to be able to, like, give an immortality, like, miss to other people, too. Otherwise, everyone you know would die. Right. right. That's why I couldn't be a vampire. That's true. I, I saw, uh, you know, uh, a couple of people making a good point that money can buy a lot of these things, but it can't buy all of them. It certainly can't br buy you a conversation with someone that's passed away. It, it can't buy you confidence. Can't buy you confidence all mm -mm. the time. And uh, I don't know that it could buy you true love. No. It might find you some kind of love, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, yeah, this is really interesting. Really uh, interesting. Deviant Dreamers, welcome back. 28 months. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate you. Uh, thank you for always being such a lovely and friendly community. Deckard Games family, wishing you the happiest of birthdays, Theodore. Theodore. Theodore, where are you? Was... I don't know. He's sleuthing. He's a weasel. That's why we call him the weasel. We Dead don't really know where he is. All right, three more seconds to vote. Three, two, one. Boom. Money. Money. Unlimited money. Yeah, that A wallet money. that never empties. And you've got a soulmate came up uh strongly there babe ties to feel confident with myself always makes sense i do not feel confident in myself always but i do think that finding true love helps me with that because when i'm in the world and i feel awkward i just kind of look at my wife and scoot a little closer to her and it's... talk less <laughs> <laughs> smile wait, more wait, wait for it to pass <laughs> Also, um, uh, as we've been doing some of these wedding festivities and stuff, being around people again, I have found it's incredibly valuable if you feel awkward in social situations as everybody's returning to a, um, you know, a more healthy world uh, to just say it. Um, that's actually got me a lot of mileage to just be like, wow, I feel uncomfortable in this group of people right now. And then all the other people in the group go, <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. And then suddenly it's okay. Um, yeah. So if you do, if you do feel awkward or uncomfortable going back into group environments as, as Amelia and I are definitely um, discovering, because I used to feel three years ago, I, I could walk in any room and be okay with it. And now I feel not that way at all. And uh, so it's real. Mm -hmm. um, it's totally real, friend. Igor, hello, and thank you for joining us from Austria. Oh, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and Amelia, real quick, while I put up the poll, um, do you want to share uh, for anyone joining? Yes. Okay, so we got an awesome week. This coming weekend, we're going to be taking off because Brian and I are going to a wedding. So we will be back on stream on Tuesday for Stardew Valley. Friday, we're going to go deviant somewhere out in the real world. Uh, Saturday, we're going to start playing this game called To the Moon. And on Sunday, we will begin 
Bioshock. Yeah, we're super hyped about it. And if there's a game that you would love us to play and we just haven't yet, drop it on this form, exclamation point games in the chat. Amelia and I take this very seriously, and I'm not kidding you that I spend way too much time <laughs> sorting and resorting this list to yes. decide what we should play. Um, thank you for being with us. And again, thank you all, everybody who retweeted to, uh, to celebrate Logan's, uh, you know, happy, happy. I, I didn't even tag him. Oh, really? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, he'll find it. Um, we played Lego Star Wars. We checked it out last Saturday. It was a lot of fun. Um, honestly, I have a little trouble with any kind of flight simulation. Uh, which I think we, Star Wars is going to keep having. Yeah, so I, 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 it's probably not good for me to continue doing that. Um, but I did like it. Um, but yeah, my my equilibrium doesn't really let me do that kind of thing. We had a lot. We had a lot of fun with it though. And Amelia and I are getting much better at acknowledging our strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and I promise you all that if we're playing a game and we're just it's just not up our alley, we're just gonna like let it float yeah, away. Yeah. Mm -mm. I have a completionist obsession. It's horrible. It's horrible. If I write things down on a list, I, I just have to finish it. What about, what about you? Where do you fall on that, uh, on that scale? Are you someone that can, yes, you can suggest anything, yep. any game. Any game at all, um, right there. Uh, do you, are you someone that needs to complete when you begin a game? You've got to complete it. Or do you have no issue setting something down and just being like, no, I don't, I don't need to. Interesting. Are you getting better at letting things go? Yeah, I mean, maybe that's why I like the end of Hellblade so much. Mm. <laughs> you know, I, was like, you, I, can, I can fix it on things. Um, we've got a, a, a good number of raid targets. I want to say thanks again to our awesome moderators and lieutenants. Uh, mods, thanks for finding us. Three options of where can we raid today. We're going to do a little shorter stream today um, so Amelia and I can get to some wedding festivities. We are very excited to hang out with you all on the other side and play a little Bioshock Stardew Valley to the moon an IRL adventure. I know, I'm excited to go in the world with you. Where should we raid, friends? Type a one in the chat if you want to hit up that Horizon Forbidden West. Number two in the chat if you want to see what's going on with Cyberpunk 2077. Our buddy DJ Knight is playing. And number three is Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. Yes. Yes, yes. And Vervan, thank you for the cheers. Appreciate you. I and remember this. We played this game where we were battling, we were trying to take out Chaos, which is a very big... Uh, Lofty goal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Defeat mm -hmm. chaos. Mm -hmm. How do cheers work? You know, I don't actually know. <laughs> How do cheers work? I think there's like a little thing. There's a little diamond shape thing next to the uh, emote box and the text form yeah. thing down there. And yeah, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the chat, there is a little diamond where you can send a message. And that... I can't cheer on my own channel, but <laughs> uh, but that's how it works. That won't stop us from trying. Yes. Gina! Gina, one. thank you for the cheers. Thank you so much for the cheers. Appreciate you. Um, for anybody who's newer to the streams, uh, you can check it out. We have a starter kit. This will explain a lot of the things. Thank mm -hmm. you, Gina, for showing the cheering methodology. <laughs> um, but this will give you an explanation of uh, a lot of the things on our channel, like how to join us on our subscriber Discord, uh, how you can use all of the emotes for being a subscriber, and so on. Can we give you a hug? Yes. yes. Yes, we can give you a hug. Come here. Let me get, let me get rid of this pole here. I don't want to hug a we're gonna, pole. We're going to raid Forbidden West. All right, Forbidden West it is. Let's give you a hug. Come here. If you need a hug, come in. Thank you for being with us, friends. We appreciate you. You're going to be all right. Yeah. If you're having a stressed out day, it's okay. Just go do something for yourself, whatever yeah. that may be. If it's taking a nice hot shower, if it's just Take vegging out on the couch. Listen to some new music. Mm -hmm. That does it for me. If I mix up my music, that'll help me feel yeah, better. Yeah, maybe doing some facial stuff whatever makes you happy yeah. go go do a little something extra special just Treat for yourself. you mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. allison batch thanks for being here and welcome back six months six months and a seer fray wants to a end the stream with the ducks again summon ducks summon ducks there they are babe should we do your moves on uh, oh. Oh. here we go oh Welcome back for 11 months, Asir Frey. You've loved every second. Thank you. You love this second? Asir, do you like these ducks? I do. I like the ducks. How did I train them to do it <laughs> so exactly the same? <laughs> oh, I'm glad you feel happy. That makes me feel good. Um, thank you all for being with us today. Thank you for the love. Uh, ducks, could you just burst into a tornado, please? Thank you. Ooh. Ooh. Is it a real tornado? Yes. <laughs> 
Thank you for being with us, my friends. We're going to go show some love. This streamer is called Daydream TV. And if you like what they're up to, playing some of that good old Horizon, be sure to drop a little love on their channel. Drop them a follow and let them know with some colorful emotes that you like what they're up to. And Miss Okami, thank you so Ms. Okami. much. Miss Okami. Miss Okami, hold on, Miss Okami. What do we got for you? Something we special. We got some like hearts. Get to that like heart, heart. Heart, heart. Oh, thank you, Miss Okami. <laughs> We appreciate you. Yes. Thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Thank you for the <laughs> lovely vibes, and thank you for everybody's nice messages. And I saw a lot of beautiful artwork and things yesterday for Theo's birthday. birthday. Uh, so thank you so much for your kindness. Um, And we'll see you on Tuesday for some Stardew Valley, and then Friday for an IRL stream. That's right. We're going to miss you guys this weekend, but we promise to tell you all about the Saturday and Sunday wedding activities when we return to streaming Stardew Valley on Tuesday. All right, mods. Thank you, lieutenants. Thank you, each and every one, for hanging with us. Let's get this raid thing going. My name is Brian. My name is Amelia. And, and this, this is, is our, our Twitch. Twitch. That wouldn't be a bad thing to do at the start of the stream for people who are like, who are they and what is this? Let's get going on this raid, shall we? In three, two, two one. one. Raid, 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 raid.